Okay, welcome back to another application demo on Java Enterprise. We're going to look at the scope of a managed bean. So I'll show you what that means in concrete terms. There are basically three types of scopes that we're going to use. One's called application scoped, request scoped, and session scoped. And how they are different is how they handle the variables in their associated beans. So I have three web pages here and I have three beans that are backing behind them. Same names. So first of all, let's see what the application does. So I'm going to choose application scoped and run it and hopefully you'll see the purpose behind this. So an application scoped, it says here you can run this app in different browsers. So I'm going to choose Chrome and Safari. And what we should notice is that they share the same click value, for instance. When I click here on increment, you can see it's, co it's counting up 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Now, if I were to take this same uh, URL and bring it over to another web browser, such as Chrome, and let's see, I'll make a new tab, and let's paste in Go. The value starts at 20 and 21. So different web browsers share the same value of the click variable. And so that's application scoped. Let's close those two. Now we have something called a session scoped. So if I open up the session scoped uh, demo and I run it, I get 15, 16, 17. It looks very similar. However, if I were to take the URL and bring it into another web browser such as Chrome and let's paste and go, you can see that it starts at zero on here and so I have a different version of the value for the clicker. Over here it starts at 20, 21, 22 on Chrome it's on a different counter and so that is uh, indicating that these are on a different scope, these are session scoped. The last demo that we're going to look at is called the request scoped which means it's uh, going to reset the counter every time I click the button. But let's get coding and you'll see what I mean by the uh, different scopes. So more complicated to see it in the abstract, uh, more clear when you have a concrete example. So I'm going to start a new dynamic web project. So let's call this thing counter clicker. I'm going to have to name mine uh, version 3. I've already made two of these so I have to have a 3 in my name. First thing in counter clicker is we're going into the Java resources and I'm going to create a new package. I'm going to name mine beans. Inside of there I'm also going to create a new class. So let's come up with a name for this class. It's going to be called counter clicker application scoped. And let's click finish. Now all we have to do in this uh, class is keep track of a button click and how many times it's been clicked. So let's create a variable and we'll call it um, an integer and let's call it click value. And let's set it initially to zero. Now we're going to have a button that can increment this. So let's create a uh, class that will take care of that. So inside of the increment we're just going to take the click value and do a double plus on it, so it's going to increment it by one. Now, this is arguing that uh, we don't have a return statement. This is expecting to return a string. The return value is the value of the next page that the app should show. So, let's call it click form application scoped. And xhtml is the extension. All right, the last thing that we probably need is a uh, getter and setter. So let's see, Click, let's choose this getter and setter and uh, OK. We've got click, get the click value and set it. Now, one more thing we need to do. This is going to be a managed bean. So we need to put in our decorator managed bean. And also, we need to import it, it looks like. So import it from faces.bean. Also we need to have this thing set to a scope. We haven't done this before yet. So this is called application scoped. And once more it's a needing a import. 
All right, so there's my code that's going to increment and show me the next page. Well, we haven't created this page yet, so let's copy the text here and let's go to the web content area and let's create a new XHTML and use this name, Click Form Application Scoped XHTML. Once more, got too much stuff in here. Let's delete everything. Basic stuff to start off with. We got a, a body and a head. So inside the body, the first thing I have to do is tell a message. So we're going to put a description in here. And then after that, we're going to put in the actual name. So counter or yeah, counter value. And let's use our managed beans. So that's a pound sign, open bracket. And I'm looking for the managed bean. It doesn't show up. Notice I haven't saved the results up here. So let's go back to our bean and let's save the uh, changes there. Switch back to our form. Try this again. So pound, open bracket. There it is. We've got ourselves the bean and a period. We have methods such as increment and we have properties such as click value. I want the property. So what kind of message do I want to tell this? This was the message you saw earlier. We're going to say this is application scoped. Okay, so I put in a message that says um, run this URL in different browsers. You should see that they all share the same click value. Use this scope for objects that share the same value between users, such as a database access value, a common inventory system value, time or global message. Now after I've got the value on the screen, I want to create a form that can imp increment this. So let's do a H form and then we'll uh, set up the uh, form values inside. So the next thing we're looking for is a command button. So let's type H colon and there is command button. Okay, so what's the action? Well, the action is going to be the handler here inside of my managed bean. So it is clicker counter, application scoped, and a period. And I created the method called increment. The value of this command button is whatever we print on the face of the button. So let's say click to increment. Push the command save key, command S, and let's run this. So inside of web content I have the application start page. And as we run this we should see that the value stays the same between browsers. So we start off with increment value of 0, it goes to 1, 2, and 3, 4. So let's take the uh, URL and copy that and test to see if it works in other browsers. So let's go into Chrome, paste that, and it starts at 6, 7, 8. So it looks like our application scope is working. So between different browsers, they share the same instance of the variable. All right, so that was an example of application scoped. What we're going to do now is do a similar demo, but with the uh, session scope. So a session and application are slightly different. But we can use the same code pretty much with a few changes. So I'm going to copy and paste the uh, bean that we've created. And let's name it a little bit different. So instead of the word application, we're going to put in there session. So let's go look inside the code here for session scoped. And it looks like it's automatically renamed the um, method here and the scope is going to change. So instead of application scope, it's going to be session scope. Looks like we need to do an import. And let's check to see up here we do not need to have this other import. We can remove it. So there's another change that we have to make inside of the uh, return value. So this is going to return the wrong page here. So click form application scope. We're going to change that word to a session scope. And that will become the next page in our process. The same page actually. Now we're going to have another form that will respond to this bean. 
So let's do another copy and paste. Same idea, or as we're going to rename this thing as session scoped. And inside of session scoped, let's see if there's changes here. Once more, we're going to have to change the whole uh, introduction message. So we'll type out another message so that it's different. It should say session scoped. Uh, run this URL in different browsers. You should see that each session or user has its own version of the increment variable. So you would use this type of scope on a private instance of the variable, such as a shopping cart or a personal score in a game. All right, now we got to rename these two instances of a, of a bound variable. They are bound to the wrong bean, so I'll delete both of them. Now the counter variable, let's do a pound sign open, and we want to choose session scoped and dot click value. For the action on the button, I'm going to do the same thing, but with a method. So pound sign, open bracket. Let's choose session scoped again. Do a dot and let's choose the word increment. All right, so it looks like we're ready to run this. Let's do a right click and run as. And click finish. We should see ourselves a new message. It says session scoped run this URL in different browsers. So we'll try it in this browser first of all. And it looks like it's counting like normal. We're up to 10 now. However, if we were to take this URL and copy it, let's take it into Chrome now. And let's make a new URL or a new tab and paste it. <clears throat> now it starts over at zero. So this one counts from zero to one to two to three. Over on this page, it's going from 10 to 11 to 12 to 13. If I were to open up Safari, and let's paste in this same URL, it starts over at zero again. So this means that every session or every user that logs in, in every web browser, every distinct part has its own set of click values. So this one goes up to 15. This one over here starts at four, continues to five. Now, however, though, if I take this uh, Chrome browser and I duplicate the tab, so let's do a right click and duplicate. Notice it keeps going at 15, 16, 17. Or if I even open a new tab and paste, it continues on at 18. So the counter is shared between tabs on a browser, but it runs in an independent copy of itself between browsers. So that's what a session scoped variable looks like. Okay, so we have one more to worry about. We have application scoped as an example, session scoped, and the third one that we're going to do is called a request scope. So let's start with the uh, process again of copying and pasting one of our beans that we have and just change a few values. So the new value is called request scoped. So let's go into the request scoped bean and name a few things. So first of all, obviously this line number seven has to go and we're going to rename it as request scoped. Now this is actually optional. Everything is a request scope if it doesn't have anything listed, but we're going to put it in anyway just to be specific. Make sure that you import the right uh, library here. So I'm looking at JavaX faces bean request scoped. If you have the other one, it won't work. It looks like this one can be removed, so we'll remove the application scoped item. Okay, double check your work there. So now uh, the, uh, the return value, we're going to make that one as a request scoped page. All other changes are not necessary, so let's Copy this just in case I make a mistyping here. Save it. Let's do a copy and paste again. So copy, paste. So I'm going to change this to request scoped XHTML. And let's open up the code. 
First of all, let's erase the message to our user. It's going to be wrong for request scope. So the message is going to say, request scoped. Run this URL in different browsers. You should see that each request, or each click, has its own version of the variable. The value is continually reset to its initial value of zero, and then incremented. Use this type of scope for short-term values, such as a form submission. This is the default scope of every managed bean. Okay, it's time to change these two embedded uh, values here. So I'm going to delete the counter value and then the uh, linked value to the increment method. Let's retype those. So let's get them in the right object this time. So we're going to say request scoped is the bean we're looking for. And I want the property called value. And then inside of the action, let's type in pound sign, open. And we want to use the request scoped again. And we want the method called increment. Let's see what this runs like. So run as, and let's demonstrate that this is different. So now it's a request scope. If I click here, it goes to 1. It appears that it doesn't go any higher than 1. So the reason why is because the value is continually reset to its initial value of 0 and then incremented. So if we were to look at a Chrome tab, for instance, let's close the previous Chromes and open a new tab. So I want to copy the request scoped and put it into this tab here. It starts at 0, increments to 1. Click it again, it resets to 0 and goes to 1. So it never gets any higher than 1, it appears. So the request is the scope that is short term. Every time you click the form, you get a new increment of 0. So that brings us to the end of this demo. We've got three different scopes, application, request, and session. There are other types of scopes, but those are the three most common, and this will be used in our next assignment.